take a look at plate boundaries. So we've discussed the theory of plate tectonics and how it actually surrounds plate boundaries. And we have all these tectonic plates. Well, a lot of times those tectonic plates are hitting each other or moving towards each other or moving away. It depends upon the type of boundary. So the three types of boundaries we have are divergent boundaries. Now these are also called spreading plates. And in your textbook, you're going to see this an awful lot. Now at divergent boundaries or spreading plates, this is where two plates are moving away from each other. They're diverging. We have convergent boundaries in your textbook, also called colliding plates. And this is where two plates move towards each other. We have a third type of boundary called a transform boundary. And in your textbook, it's, it's called a conservative plate. Now this is where two plates actually are sliding past each other, almost like moving side by side. Neither of them are moving up nor down. So they just sort of move sideways. Now this is a picture kind of showing you a little bit about what's going on in picture form. And so our divergent boundary, if you take a look here, this is our spreading. We have two plates moving away from each other and it actually forms a ridge. We do see volcanic activity here and this is something called constructive. We actually see new plate or new seafloor um, or new, I guess, new crust forming at this particular place. Now during a convergent boundary we have two plates moving towards each other. We have two things that can happen at convergent boundaries. This picture is showing you a subduction zone. So we actually have one plate moving underneath another one. We do see volcanic activity at these types of things. And it forms something called a trench, like the Mariana Trench. You might have heard of this before. Now this is a destructive plate because it's actually destroying crust. Unlike divergent, which creates it, convergent boundaries destroy it. And we also see the transform boundary. Notice how they're sliding past each other, but they're not really moving up or down. We see a lot of earthquakes at these particular boundaries, not so, uh, not so many volcanic activity. Really nothing like that happens. They're called conservative plates because the lithosphere, the crust, is neither created or destroyed. So it's just sort of sliding past each other. Now there's actually three main theories about plate movement. And remember, plate tectonics is an overgeneral, a kind of a general theory describing why the plates have moved. Now there's actually three different theories about plate movement. And to tell you the truth, within the larger theory of plate tectonics, all three of these are sort of merged together. So we have this first theory, which is called the convection current theory. And this states that the huge convection currents occur in the Earth's interior. Now we've already discussed how the convection cells in class, we've discussed how the hotter magma rises up and then as it cools, it's going to sink down towards the, uh, towards the core, towards the center. Now this drives the plate movement in the direction of the convection currents. So in this picture, notice the one on the left kind of drives this plate over to the left where the one on the right is driving it to the right. So it depends on the plate, or the convection current will sort of drive the plate. Now magma is going to rise from the core to the surface, spreading out at these mid-ocean ridges. And we're going to talk more about this soon, about seafloor spreading and how that actually happens. Now it's thought that the radioactive decay in the core actually creates these upwellings, those mag that magma to rise up through the mid-ocean ridge. So this is the convection current theory. The second theory is called the dragging theory. Now this states that plates are actually dragged or subducted by their oldest edges, which have become cold and heavy. So in this particular picture, we kind of see what we saw in the last picture. We see over here on the right hand side, we see that upwelling at the mid-ocean ridge. And we see those convection currents sort of pushing the plates over in the direction of the convection current. Now the plates are hottest at this mid-ocean ridge, but as they're moving away, it's actually cooling down, kind of like what we talked about in the other slide, the convection current theory. So as that convection current is moving, 
the crust itself is becoming colder. It's cooling down. It's going to become a little bit heavier. And then what happens is we have this, um, this crust becoming really heavy, really cold, really heavy, and then it's going to become uh, kind of, it's going to be dragged underneath the other crust or the other plate. So this is also called ridge push and slab pull. So ridge push is due to the convection current. As it becomes really heavy and dense, it actually kind of pulls the rest of the crust down with it. So slab pull, ridge push. So this is called the dragging theory. Basically, the crust itself is pulling the, old, the newer crust. It's pulling it down into these trenches. And then our third theory is called the hot spot theory. Now the hot spots are plumes of lava that are usually found under a plate. They rise vertically through the mantle. Now hot spots are just how they're named. They are hot spots. Basically there's a random magma pool underneath the crust in the mantle that somehow finds a way up towards the crust and up towards the surface. Now hot spots can be found at plate margins, kind of over near the edges of them, but we really find them away from them. So think of Hawaii as an example. Hawaii is in the middle of the Pacific plate. Also, we have Yellowstone. Yellowstone is a huge hotspot that actually sits underneath the North American plate, underneath the middle of our own country. Now, the thought with this particular theory is that the outward flow of viscous rock from the center, from the core, may cause a drag force on the plates, which cause them to move. So some people actually think that hotspots help move that particular crust along. So it creates this drag force once that vis viscous rock, or basically the magma, comes up from the center. Now, I put a little picture in here showing you the, um, the, the islands of the Hawaiian, the islands of the Hawaiian Islands. Um, notice that Kauai is actually the oldest. We have Oahu, Maui, and then Hawaii is the youngest island. So as the plate is moving, the hot spot itself doesn't move. What's moving is the plate. So as the plate is moving along, the hot spot no longer is formed underneath these particular islands. They used to be volcanoes. So Kauai was the first one to form as the plate moved. The plate moved so Oahu can actually form. Then it moved again, then Maui formed. And now it's sitting underneath Hawaii. And actually the plate has moved a little bit and what's forming now is a new island. Now this isn't the correct spelling. It's a more of an American spelling than a Hawaiian spelling. But we have a new island that's forming underneath the ocean because it's now, the hotspot is sort of sitting underneath this portion of it. It's called Lo, I believe it's called Lo'ohi, but I don't know my Hawaiian very well. So we actually might see a new island popping up sometime in your future. Whether or not it's going to be able to be inhabited, that's a different story. But for right now, we do have a new island that's sort of forming in the Hawaiian Islands. I think that's pretty cool.